When I moved to my new house, our pool natural gas heater was on its last legs. We knew we wanted to replace it, but we wanted to get a heat pump and stores in San Diego told us don't do it, they don't carry them, and that they're a bad idea for our locale. But I went on Amazon and bought one anyway, because I've got the data and we've been heating our pool. The hot tub is hot right now, all with a heat pump. So let's see how it works and how with the right robots and right tools, you can have a net zero house or save money and still have a nice pool. Let's figure this out together. I'm Ricky, and this is Tuba Da Vinci. This video is brought to you by BeatBot. So I'm on a mission to build a net zero home. That means powering everything 24 seven from solar and batteries. Now, I knew one of my biggest challenges was gonna be my pool. And if you have a pool, you know what I mean. But it is possible to have a great pool and not break the bank. Here's how. One, get a variable speed pool pump, which uses significantly less energy. And I have an entire video about this you can check out in the description. The second big source of energy is gonna be heating your pool. So at the heart of our entire pool system is this, our solar panels, about a six kilowatt system on top of our pool patio. That means that we produce energy from the sun, run that pool heat pump and heat the pool for free. Now you're probably thinking, why didn't you get the thermal pads that heat the water directly. Well, the reason is those only last about 10 years and I actually had them on my roof when I moved in and they went bad leaking salt water all over the place. Plus solar can do anything. If on a particular day, we don't really need to heat the pool, this can charge our cars or anything else. When it comes to heating your pool, you have a few choices. The first is a natural gas pool heater, which is what I used to have. Now mine was old and rusty and needs to be replaced, but a good gas pool heater is a great choice. It's the fastest and highest performance pool heater you can probably get. They come in sizes as big as 250,000 BTUs and are a great value, but I can't produce natural gas, only electricity. So I wanted to go with something electric. Then there's two types of electric. First, there's electric resistive pool heaters, which are basically 100% efficient, but depending on your energy cost, it's probably more expensive to operate the natural gas. But then there's this, the heat pump pool heater. And if your electric resistive heater is 100% efficient, well, this thing's between 300 and 400% efficient. Well, more accurately, it has a coefficient of performance of between three or four. That means for every watt of energy consumed, it can produce between three and four watts of heat. And it does this by moving heat from the air to the heat in your pool instead of creating heat like the other types. Now to test the coefficient of performance on a cool February day here in San Diego, I started heating our 580 gallon hot tub at 9 a.m. By measuring the amount of energy it consumes and how long it takes, we can figure this all out. Our hot tub started at 57 degrees Fahrenheit and the amount of energy required to heat 580 gallons of water from 57 to 100 degrees is 61 kilowatt hours. So that's what the electric resistive heater would need at 100% efficiency. For our gas heater converting units and factoring an 85% efficiency, we'd need 2.08 therms. Don't worry, we'll get back to how all this breaks down in terms of cost at the end. But let's talk about another big source of cost and that's cleaning your pool. Monthly pool service probably runs between 100 and $200 or 1200 to $2,400 a year. Yeah, pools are expensive, but check these out. This is the latest generation of pool cleaning robots by Beepot. This is the Beepot AquaSense 2 Ultra. This has AI and cameras and it does a really awesome job. As you can see, even in the winter time with rain, our pool looks fantastic. The Pro has nine motors and the Ultra has 11, adding two side brushes. They're great for pools above ground or in ground of all shapes. Its dual filter design cleans down to 150 microns and with 3.7 liters of capacity, it can clean a surprising amount. Its 13,400 milliamp battery packs a serious punch. Good for 10 hours of surface cleaning for the Ultra and 11 for the Pro. Five hours of continuous runtime for floor cleaning and four and a half for five hours for walls and waterline cleaning. The included 88 watt charging dock station is the easiest method I've seen for recharging these robots, which takes approximately four and a half hours. Let's just kind of put some pebbles and sand. Oh boy. And then one of the big pains that we have is pebbles and things. Like when kids come and play, they love throwing stuff in the pool. So let's do that. Pebbles right about there, right there, and maybe over there. All right, if you can see just how difficult that would be to get out with like a brush manually, but let's see how it does. Floor mode. Floor mode. Please put the robot in the pool. So this is a five-in-one cleaner. I've never seen that before. And the reason is because it does the floor, which is pretty normal. The walls, also pretty normal. The water line, pretty normal. But then this can also do the surface. It can skim along the surface and pick up leaves and stuff. And this is their clarifier. It's basically crushed up shells and other particulates. 
and it actually injects it, which that will trap and capture little kind of invisible debris, the stuff that makes your pool look kind of cloudy, and then capture all that in the basket. Its AI-powered targeted debris detection will find especially dirty parts of your pool and spend extra time cleaning it all up. Now, if you've ever used those suction-powered cleaners, like the one that you plug in right here, those just kind of dumbly move around. They're never gonna do a very good job. But honestly, if you have one of these and you check the chemical levels and the pH once in a while, you can probably save yourself some money by not having a pool person by getting one of these. And that's where the ROI comes in, right? If it costs $150, $200 a month to have a pool person, 10 months of that is $2,000, right? So that adds up really quickly in terms of saving money and getting an ROI. The Ultra's Hybrid Sense AI pool mapping is amazing. Mapping out your entire pool to optimize routes. And as I've seen it run over the last couple of weeks, it keeps getting better and smarter. So I just pulled the Ultra out. How cool is that? It shows you the mapping that it's done, like the, the route that it's taken, and you can see how efficient it is. All right, so I turned the dispenser on for the clarifier, and I put it into surface mode. Let's throw them back in. By the way, we threw a lot of leaves in the pool, the top, to see how the surface skimming does, and uh, that is what came out of it. So the AquaSense 2 Pro and Ultra both have six cleaning modes. The first is floor mode. It'll clean the floor one time. Then we have standard mode, which does the floor, wall, and water line one time. Then pro mode adds a surface. So it does the floor, wall, water line, and surface. And then we have some custom modes. The area mode can either clean the surface floor or wall as many times as you like. We have it set to two times on the surface and nothing else. That's our area mode. Then there's multi zone mode. This is like the other pro mode, except it's really optimized for if you have a pool that has bowl shapes and steps like ours, you see the steps back there, the multi zone mode does a really good job. And inside of there, you can do floor, wall, water line, or surface. And finally, there's eco mode, which is interesting. It'll clean the floor one time and then just go on standby. And it'll do that every two days until the batteries are depleted. And you'll know that they're depleted because the pool robot will surface and be at the surface for you to retrieve. But what the Ultra adds is some AI. If you look back here, you can see that camera. So this adds computer vision and AI algorithms to have some extra features. For example, it has a hybrid sense mapping technology. So it'll actually map out your pool. And like we showed you, it'll show you the map of your pool, which is pretty amazing. And second, it has AI powered targeted debris detection, which means that it will actually stray off of its course if it sees a clump of debris and go pick it up. So we'll show you the the AI powered debris detection for the Ultra, and then we'll show you the remote control mode on the Pro. But remember, the remote control mode is available on both models. And by the way, another feature of the Ultra is that it'll tell you, it'll talk to you. The Pro doesn't have that. The Ultra will actually tell you what mode you're in. This is the Ultra. Here we go. All right, so while the Ultra shows off its debris detection using AI, let's show you the remote control mode here on the Pro. So let's go to remote control mode. It says confirm. Yes, let's confirm. Accelerate. Okay. Oh, that's cool. Look at it turn. So here we are. We got some leaves and some stuff. Let's see if we can pick it up. First little piece. Got it. Here we go. And I think we've got it. I'm gonna show you real quick. If you look at that little inlet door, when I start navigating, it closes, you see that? And then when I'm going forward, it opens again. Super advanced stuff. Okay, so that's normal mode, but check this out. If we switch it over to accelerate, look at how quick and easy it is to use. Another really cool feature is park mode. When the robot is on the surface and able to take commands, you can tell it to go park. So let's try that now. It'll just found a boundary, take it over, and you don't even need the hook. You could just grab it right from here. Look at that. And when it comes time to charge, BeatBot has thought of everything. There's no plugs to plug in. Thanks to their wireless charging dock, even if your robots are wet, all you gotta do is set them in. Start charging. And it automatically starts to charge. All right, so this is the AquaSense 2 Ultra with the AI and the computer vision. And as you can see on this step, 
there's a lot of sand and debris. Can you see that, that line? And I've noticed that it's just been moving around and just focusing on this area. So instead of just making general passes and coming around eventually, it's making a decision to just kind of stick around here and clean this up because of the level of debris that it detected. That's really one of the key features of the Ultra over the Pro. Okay, so I just got the AquaSense 2 Ultra out of the pool. Let's take a look. Now, you just saw some of that AI in action because it just went up that step and noticed there's a lot of algae and debris and just focused in and cleaned that area. I've never seen a pool robot do that. Those steps are our biggest challenge and that's where we normally have to manually brush. The floor itself normally isn't a challenge, but look at this. So here is the fine like algae. Because this step is higher up, it gets more sunlight and there's more algae growth, typically on those kinds of steps. And it cleaned all of it out. So then both robots make a ton of sense. And if you're looking for the most versatile, efficient pool cleaning robot, the AquaSense 2 Pro makes a ton of sense. And if you're that savvy, cutting edge, AI driven kind of person, and you want that extra level of AI intelligence, for spot cleaning and automatic debris detection, then the AquaSense 2 Ultra makes a ton of sense. Both are five-in-one cleaners that can clean all parts of your pool. Both have the clear water clarification system to keep your pool looking crystal clear. Both have 13,400 milliamp hour batteries for powerful run times. Both have smart water surface parking and remote control navigation for surface cleaning. Now the Ultra adds a couple of extra things like the hybrid sense AI mapping feature that will actually map out your pool and show you a cool visual of what it looks like. And the advanced AI debris detection where it'll actually veer off course to go find especially dirty parts of your pool. And finally, multi-level platform adaptive path cleaning. That's what you just saw over there. When it got up to that next little step, it noticed a lot of cleaning needed to be done and it focused on that before going back to other parts of the pool. So that's what the AI affords you. We live in a golden age of robotics allowing us to take our time back. And I think this might finally be when the pool cleaning robots are good enough to do everything all the parts of your pool in one machine. Check out the amazing new lineup from Beepot, their AquaSense 2 lineup of pro and ultra robots that can make the job of cleaning your pool unbelievably easy. And we'll have links in the description to learn more and see how you can buy one for yourself. So here's a quick look at our systems. We've got two water filters. This is the chlorinator. This takes the salt water, applies a lot of electric current, dissolves it, has free chlorine and introduce that to the pool, all the valves and stuff, our control unit. And here is the heat pump. It's actually on right now. Free AC, by the way, in the summertime. You can duck that out and get free air conditioning because it's really cool. This is the performance of the heat pump. It's still kicking on and getting to full speed because I just turned it back on. But the water is coming in at 100 and leaving at 102. Now in the summertime, we've seen a five degree delta. Right now it's two, it'll probably end up around three or four. So that tells you the performance of the heat pump. It tells you the inlet and outlet temperatures. And from that and the energy consumption that we can monitor, we can figure out the coefficient of performance. All right, the data is officially in, it's three o'clock. And uh, I understand, I think, why they don't recommend heat pumps for all locales. Now this is winter, right? And so we started with a temperature in the hot tub of 57 degrees. The hot tub is 580 gallons and it took six hours and used 20 kilowatt hours of energy to heat the hot tub from 57 to 100 degrees. Now the gas pool heater that we had before would have done that in about 55 minutes, so under an hour, but it would have consumed 2.08 therms of energy, which cost $4.70. Our electric bill would have been $7.12, except we have solar panels like we mentioned, so that's actually free heating for us if we charge it that way. Now obviously there's scheduling, so you can schedule that to heat in the night or in the early morning so that way the hot tub is ready for you. And finally, I wanted to kind of calculate this heat pump component. So the, the amount of energy that we needed is 61 kilowatt hours of energy to heat 580 gallons from 57 to 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Now we achieved that with just 20.3 kilowatt hours. And the reason why is that the heat pump has a COP, a coefficient of performance over three. So in our testing, it changed during the day because I mean, it does do that, but it was between three and 3.5. In the summer, I've seen as high as four, but that means that if we were to just use a traditional electric water heater, it would have been $21 or 61 kilowatt hours of energy. And we saved a third. We only had to use a third of that, 30% of the energy to accomplish that. Now, all this is to say, yes, pools are 
challenging, right? We knew this going in. And I knew the hardest part about this house to be net zero was going to be this pool. Water just has a lot of latent heat energy. It takes a lot of energy to heat it up. Yes, the pool's not hot yet. It's February. We don't really plan on getting the pool to temperature until the end of March, probably. But the hot tub, we can get hot on any given day, all from solar power. And that's pretty amazing. So then the two steps that we've really taken to bring down our energy costs was one, that variable speed pool pump, which has reduced our energy consumption from 2000 watts at full speed down to like 500 watts and about half the flow. The second part is the pool robots, right? Because if you pay a pool person, that costs between $100 and $200 a month, and they have to come and manually do it, or you have to do it. But these pool robots do an amazing job. Both of these guys are in there right now, picking up and cleaning. And as you can see, the level of rocks has completely come down. And over the course of the next couple of days, this pool would be completely back to normal. And the really cool feature is that water clarity feature where they have this additive that binds to the stuff in the pool and helps to clean it all up. And as a result, our water looks crystal clear. So huge thanks to Beatbot for sending out these robots. And if you're in the market, if you have a pool and you want to get some ideas and stuff, definitely check out our entire pool series. But a great pool cleaning robot is a must have in order to keep your pool clean and not break the bank. All right, that's a quick look at how pool heat pumps work, if they're worth it, depending on where you live. Obviously, if you live in Florida, they're really well worth it. The humidity in the air, the higher temperatures. And here in San Diego, even though it's not the ideal climate for it, it does work. And with the right pool robots, you're gonna have a beautiful pool year round with minimal work. All right, if that was cool, Definitely check out the entire video of pool series that we have. I'm Ricky Tuba Da Vinci. We'll catch you next week.